thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I really appreciate that you clicked play. Well, today we're going to talk about in the same way that Abraham sent his servant off to get a bride for Isaac, his son, the father sent his servant, John the Baptist, off to get a bride for his son, Jesus. And we notice that the father's servant, John the Baptist, even tells us the very moment Jesus has ruptured his bride. And then we also discover in this lesson what the bride's ministry is going to be once she's raptured. Okay, so I need to set up the scene, and so I'm going to have you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 3. And in verses 22 and 23, we learn that Jesus and John were ministering in two different locations. And so first we're going to talk about John. He was ministering with his disciples in Anon. And we see in verse 25, there arose a discussion on the part of John's disciples with a Jew about purification. What had just happened in the previous chapter? Well, it was a wedding in Cana where you'll notice everybody in the bridal party is mentioned except for the bride. But we do notice that there were six water pots that were used for purification. So let me tell you how this works. And I kind of learned this when I went back to New York. The very first time I went back to New York on business, oh, I don't know, 30, maybe 40 years ago. And I walked into this restaurant and you walk in the lobby and there's a pitcher of water there. And it's used for when Jews come to the restaurant, somebody pours water over the Jewish person's hands and this water goes into a huge urn. Okay, well, same too at the wedding in Cana. There were six water pots there, and there were 20 to 30 liters of water in each one. They were not filled all the way to the brim because there were guests perhaps still arriving that would have water poured over their hands, their dirty hands, and this dirty water would go into these six pots. Well, when they ran out of wine, Jesus told the servants, go fill them up with water. Well, they took these urns that were already full of dirty water from people washing their hands, and the scripture says they filled them to the brim with water, and then they served the, wa then they served the wine from those purification pots. So now we see that there was a Jewish person who had gone out to where John and his disciples were ministering, and he is talking about this miracle that happened in Cana. And can you believe it? Jesus had us fill those pots that were full of filthy water with water, and then had us serve wine to the guests out of them. So they're having this discuss discussion in John chapter 3 about what on earth? This is filthy. This is gross. What kind of a miracle is this? Who is this Jesus? This is so bizarre. Were the people really clean? Did the people that drink that wine, were they unpurified at that time? So you can see this discussion and all these questions. But John, the Baptist, overhearing this discussion, he starts talking bridal terminology. Okay, now let's talk about Jesus because he was ministering at the same time, but in a completely different location. And where is Jesus? Well, scripture tells us he's in the city of Sychar in Samaria. Well, Sychar means strong wine. And Jesus was at Jacob's well, his, the father of Joseph, so Jesus was at Jacob's well, which was next to a parcel of land that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. You know Joseph, the one that was sold off into slavery in Egypt, and then his boss, who was a father type to Joseph, now at this time, his father, Pharaoh, gave Joseph a Gentile bride. All right. Well, so now here we've got Jesus <laughs> talking to the woman at the well, and she's asking these questions, and, you know, where do we worship at? And why are you talking to me? You know, just questions like that, and she's very interested. 
She was looking for Messiah. No doubt she'd been baptized by John in the Jordan at some time previously. All right, so Jesus is talking to the woman at the well. At the same time, John the Baptist is in, is in a different location with his disciples, and his disciples are having a discussion with one of the servants that had been at the wedding in Cana. And then John the Baptist says in John chapter 3, verse 29, he who has the bride is the bridegroom. Boom! Right there, John the Baptist told us that the bride is the woman at the well. She had just left her stone water pot. Okay, when you leave your, your stone water pot, that means you are raptured, okay? Or you've just died. But we know the woman at the well, she leaves her stone water pot. She's been raptured. So then what does she do? She runs into the city and she draws the men of the city out to Jesus. And he stays with them for two days. And all those men at the well, they then honor the woman, unnamed Gentile woman, because the Sumerians were Gentiles. And they honor her and they say, you know, it's no longer because of what you told us about Jesus. It's like, we've heard him ourselves now and he is the Messiah. So you see, the woman at the well is the pre-tribulation raptured bride. So who was left behind? Oh, the children of the bride chamber that are referred to in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So who is left behind? Those men in the city of Sychar, they aren't the bride because they weren't raptured at the same time. But her ministry is to go get her, her brethren first. Okay, then who shows up? Well, the disciples show up. At the very same time, Jesus is telling the disciples who had gone into town for some fast food and were trying to feed the fast food to Jesus. But Jesus said to them, the harvest is white. Okay, who else was left behind? Well, it was John the Baptist's disciples that were with him ministering in Anon. So you see, the bride, once she's raptured pre-trib, she is going to go to her brethren and draw them out to Jacob's well, the father's well. They are going to begin studying the scriptures like we are studying the scriptures. And the reason why it was so important here for John the Baptist to announce, he who has the bride is the bridegroom, is because once the pre-trib rapture is, of the bride has occurred, there's gonna be a lot of people speculating, where's all these people? Is it aliens? Oh, did they die in that earthquake? Did they die in that flood? Did, did all these people die in that hurricane? Because there's gonna be other crazy things happening. So the Holy Spirit, who's working through John the Baptist, wants the left behind church to know Jesus has the bride. Yes, there's a pre-trib rapture. And yes, it's the bride. Yes, that's the rib of Christ. Yes, you're left behind. So now read the seven letters of the book of Revelation because they're going to tell you why you're left behind, what you need to do to overcome, to either be a martyr or to make it to that mid-trib rapture of the church that has the believing portion of Jews grafted back into it per Romans chapter 11 that we've talked about. Now, what does John the Baptist say next? Right after he announced that Jesus had raptured the bride, he says to his disciples, he must increase, I must decrease. So you see, John the Baptist knew that as soon as he had accomplished his ministry of securing a bride for the Son of God, he knew he would be martyred and that he would be leaving the scene, that he would be decreasing. He knew that Jesus 
would be increasing because he had the bride, the helpmate bride at his side in her glorified body. She could minister in hidden form, just like he did on his resurrection day, or visible, but his identity obscured, so he appeared to be somebody else. So John the Baptist, once he finished his ministry of securing a bride for the Son of God, he was arrested, and you know, he was then beheaded. Now, when the bride is raptured, she will be doing the work of John the Baptist. She will come and she is going to be working through the left behind church and all these Jews coming into belief and being grafted into the church. She's going to be helping them as the helpmate bride, which is why Eve was created for Adam as a skilled helpmate. Well, the raptured bride is going to help the church then bring in the great white harvest. She is going to be the battery pack, so to speak. So even though the church may not see her with their earthly eyes as she's ministering, they are going to see the result of her ministry when they, the church, lays hands on the sick, they will be healed. As they are sharing the gospel, hearts are going to be stirred. Why? Because the bride is going to bring with her the very presence of Jesus Christ. And so this is why the book of Acts is prophetic. It's all going to happen again. People are going to be healed. Because so many people are going to be sick and decrepit and injured from the natural earthly effects that are being brought about on the earth. So when you read the book of Acts, take notice of what the angels are doing because this time it's going to be the bride. She's going to have the power of God. She's going to do the greater works and she's going to help the left behind church bring in the great harvest, the main harvest that happens at the mid-trib rapture of the church, Revelation 12, 5. The church at that point will be called the man-child, the rod of iron, because they are the government of God. And so when they are raptured, they're going to throw down the great red dragon. Okay, so I'm hoping you see this progression and the power of John the Baptist's ministry and what he was sent for, just like Abraham sent his servant to go get a bride for his son. God the Father sent John the Baptist to get a bride for his son. Because just like Rebecca then married Isaac and they were all about the father's business, so too will the bride and Jesus Christ be all about the Father's business, securing the other things He wants. So if you get it, just put in the comment section, I get it, okay? Because I want to be praying for you and I want to be able to move on with the next thing we want to cover. But it's so important to see, just like when John the Baptist finished his ministry, he was removed from the earth, so too. When the bride has finished her prophetic ministry, has testified of the prophecies and has done it accurately, she's going to be removed because that's what the Father is looking for. The Father is looking for the bride to mature so that He can remove her from the earth and she can begin the next step of her ministry that she is making herself ready for right now. We are making ourselves ready for the next step of ministry when we are in our glorified eternal bodies. Okay, <laughs> thank you for listening and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.